Hi there. Joy here from Joyously Handmade. Um, I'm doing another video that I haven't done in quite a while, um, or I should say it's my first video in quite a while. I finally figured out a way, as you can see, to get my camera suspended above my work, which is fabulous. I mean, it's a little wobbly because right now my phone is actually hanging from two strings from a light, but it works. Um, so this way I can actually do my videos, as I am today, with bedhead and my minion pajamas on. So I love it. Hopefully this works well for everyone concerned. You can see what I'm doing. Um, the only downside to it is normally when I'm doing a watercolor, which is what today's is going to be, is a watercolor, um, I normally have it propped up a little bit. So my page would be like this, so that it can drain off, um, or drain down, I should say, a little bit. But uh, it actually works out for today's type of picture that I'm not doing that, so it's okay. I. Uh, Basically, I was looking for something creative to do today. It's my day off and I always try to get something creative in on my day off But I didn't have any brilliant ideas. I've been playing around with watercolors lately and um, if you've been on my blog, which is um, HTTP colon double backsplash surviving life over 40 um, Also known as adventures in menopause. You will see that lately. I have been um posting some of my watercolor work and I'm I'm not new to watercolor. I try it every couple years. I'm not good at watercolor. Um, mostly because I don't have the patience involved to keep at it long enough to get the techniques down. Normally I try it and I'm disappointed with it and I put it away. And then a while later I try it again and I'm disappointed with it and I put it away. So this time around I'm trying to be a better person and spend a little more time and effort on practicing my techniques so that I can actually be good at it. Part of this is just because it frustrates me that I have something I'm really bad at. And part of it is that I'm hoping to be able to um, do some paintings for sale when I retire, which hopefully will be in a few years. And the plan is to live somewhere warm and sell things from a beach, which would be my dream come true. Um, and obviously since I'm also crafty, I will be making other things to sell as well. But it would be really nice to be able to just kind of pop up an easel and go to town while I'm standing around on the beach, especially when there are so many beautiful things to look at and to paint. So anyways, um, as I said, I've been doing some watercolors lately and I didn't have any inspiration for one for today. So as usual, I went on Pinterest and I saw an absolutely beautiful picture on Pinterest. Now the orientation was different. The picture that I'm, I'm doing something similar to was actually a portrait orientation, so long ways up. And uh, I like it like that. However, because it was kind of a landscape, I thought it would be nicer this way. And also because it fits better on, the, on screen, so I'm doing it this way. Now you'll see on the page, hopefully you can see this, there are some yellow dots and what I'm painting is actually like a, a starry night with silhouetted trees on the bottom section and so what I've done is I've taken some resist this is my resist um, also known as frisket and uh, this is like a latex based product that um, resists the water in the watercolors and so if you have any parts of your page you would like to remain a nice bright white color you can cheat a little bit and not try to paint around it by putting frisket on it. Um, now I have learned a few things about this that I didn't know when I first started using it. The first of which is don't shake it. I used to shake it to stir it up because it does separate and then I had all my bubbles in these little things that um, sometimes the color would, would leach through where the bubble was because it wasn't thick enough. So I've learned that. And I've also ruined a few paint brushes using it because it is a latex and if you don't clean your brush off often enough, you can't really get it off. It gets into the bristles and your brush just turns out to be a hard lumpy mass. So what I have now is I have this old beat up paintbrush from one of my sets and I use this only for this and I make sure that every few minutes I wash it off. And you can still see it's got a little bit of a line there. Um, from where the frisket's been on it and I've cleaned it off. It is a water-based product, but 
well, I mean, it's not water-based, it's latex-based, but you can wash it off with water as long as you're fast. Once it dries, it's just coming off kind of like crazy glue or, or not crazy glue, Elmer's craft glue. Um, you could probably use Elmer's craft glue in the same way as long as it was dry enough before you used it. Because what we do is we paint it, like I say, in drops where I want the white to be because these are going to be stars and the moon. And then when you're done the entire painting, you rub at the page lightly and it'll peel off in little bits of rubber. So anyways, that's why you see I did this ahead because it does have to dry thoroughly before you can put any kind of color on it in order for it to work properly. I've got a couple dots that I managed to get a little bit more frisket on it than I expected, but they seem to be dry. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Today's painting is going to actually use four colors for the sky and then black for the silhouette. So very simple. I've got a brand new fancy palette that I bought and I'd love to show you here, but I'm afraid I'm going to run water everywhere. Here it is. And they're just uh, tabs. They're not anything fancy, but I was frustrated with my lack of color range <clears throat> and being the impatient person that I am I didn't want to have to uh, blend all my colors myself so I went and I got this at Michael's and it was like seven dollars and there's 32 colors or something like that so it's great and what I've done is I have pulled out three of the four blues one is too light for what I want to do and a nice dark purple so that's all I'm going to use for the sky is these three or four blues and a nice dark purple and I also bought myself a really nice, really nice, as you can see, pointy paintbrush that I thought would be fabulous because I've seen a lot of people using them in the videos. And I really haven't used it very much. And I don't know if it's just that I'm nervous to try it out. But somehow or other, I always end up going back to this beat up old. It's nice and soft. It soaks up a lot of water. And most of my paintings actually end up mostly being this large brush which is probably not really meant for this job at all but for whatever reason that seems to be where I like to use it so what I'm doing is I'm laying down a nice thick wash of clear water I'm not gonna bother going all the way down because this is all gonna be black down here anyways at some point but I am gonna make it nice and wet because I want all these colors to run together really well if you've seen anything on various um, medias right now in stores and everywhere else they're doing something called galaxy there it, it's kind of like just you can buy shoes that are painted with galaxy blah 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 and basically it's just um, swirls of dark colors with lots of stars on it that I don't know, they just it looks really relaxing and happy and warm and cozy because it's just a beautiful mix of colors. And what I'm doing now is this is the lightest blue, well not the lightest, the lightest of the ones I pulled out. There was a very, very pale blue that I didn't think would do me any good at all for this particular project. But I wanted to put that on first just as a backdrop, but I don't think there's probably going to be very much of it left when I'm done because I'm sure that all the other colors are going to run into it and they're going to be stronger than it is. But I wanted to start with a base. So there's that and I'm just going to let it run a little bit. And then I'm going to go to the next darkest color. And I can't remember which one that was now. <laughs> and I'm going to drop these in where I want them and let it run. I probably didn't mix enough paint for this so I will probably be working as I go. And because it's so wet it should, like I say I'm not real great at water oil so I'm still practicing these things but it should spread quite well and blend itself. As you can see along the edge here, there's a part that I didn't put any blue into and it is already kind of bleeding into it. I like the idea of this technique because there's no wrong way to do it, really. It's, it's, it's all just kind of working on its own to blend. And so you can't really go wrong 
all you really have to do is let it do its thing. I don't know how many different ways I've said the same thing in the last couple seconds, but anyways, you get the idea. Except that, of course, this is getting a little bit too... This is one thing I'm not good at. I, uh, I used to, when I started trying to learn watercolor, I used to have a board and I would take all these pictures and tape them down to a nice board so everything would be flat and level and my page wouldn't curl and all that kind of fun stuff. And honestly, it didn't really help my technique at all. Everything still ran together when I didn't want it to. And this time around, I have no idea where that board is and so I haven't bothered getting it out. So a lot, I get a lot of wobbles in my paint just because like this is bowing up like this, which is why the paint is running to the outside edge. But I'm not going to worry about it too much because, um, well, because I don't really care where the paint goes in this particular painting. And I can always tilt the page around later on to help spread it, which I may do anyways. What I am going to do though is I'm going to pop a little piece of paper towel under there. I'm actually doing this right on the pad of watercolor paper, which is probably not the smartest thing I could do because it could very well bleed into the next page, but I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, I don't have a lot of patience. I'm not a patient woman. Fly by the seat of my pants is how I roll because it's just easier that way. So this is the third color of blue. There's not a huge variance in them. And if I don't like the way it's going, I think I may actually add some black to one of these just to get a nice, nice dark. This one's not bad, but I'd like to have a really nice dark blue in there because it is the night sky. And in order to see this many stars, obviously the night sky is going to be good and dark. This is kind of down to the edge of where my page is. All right, so like I said, I think I'm going to do some, some running just to make sure that all these nice blues blend fairly well. I want it to be well covered. Make sure my page is lined back up where you can see it. There we go. Because now we're going to start adding in some nice dark purple. Which, I mean, purple really isn't a night sky color unless it's sunset per se. But in all these lovely galaxy things that you see, there is purple and it just somehow seems to work because it's just a nice dark rich, like a mysterious maybe, maybe that's what it is, um, color. And this is, as you can see, no plan in mind, random. I, I want to spread it out enough that it's not all in one area. I don't want it to be concentrated purple in one spot. But on the other hand, I don't want it to look like it's planned out. All right, so I've used up all the paint that I had pre-done. You know, fly by the seat of your pants, never plan ahead. And so what I'm going to do though, I think, is I do still want a nice dark blue dark 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 blue which obviously I don't have so I'm gonna build myself some more and I'm gonna add a bit of black to it and this palette has these little itty bitty plastic circles on the lid they're a little concave I guess you call them plastic circles on the lid which I thought well isn't that fabulous now I have a place to mix all these paints and I can keep them all separate and I didn't really think about the fact that by the time you stir it it's an awful lot bigger than one little tiny circle, if you know what I'm saying. So these little grooves aren't doing me an awful lot of good, to be honest. The one color actually ends up filling up three little circles, just because there was nowhere else for it to go by the time I added enough water and mixed it. All right, so I've made myself a darker blue and I'm going to dab that in here and there and let it blend. Now I can have a few of these light areas remain because it could be clouds. Well, although actually I guess I shouldn't say that because it can't really be a cloud if there's stars showing through it. So maybe I'll cover that up. And 
I don't want this to be looking like it's running downhill, so I'm going to spread that back in. But otherwise, I think this is coming out pretty well. All things considered, I like it. Let's just see if we can't spread it out a little. So as you can see, the paint will bleed and doesn't bleed in a straight line until it gets to a stopping point. It bleeds almost in like little fingers, little spreading parts here, as you can see, which leaves a really nice kind of cool, oh, my paint's running off the bottom of the page, I'm not paying attention. Um, gives it a cool look because it, it doesn't look, as I said, in a straight line, so it doesn't look unnatural. If it was in a straight line, as it is here at the bottom, when it's the water stops, it looks a little bit less natural. But when it's doing this little bleeding bit, little tiny bits at a time, it looks fantastic. All right. So I'm going to leave that as is for now and it'll keep bleeding. One thing I discovered, I did a painting the other day and I was working away on it and I added more colors and more colors and more colors trying to get it because the watercolors are nice and see-through which is fabulous for some things but for other things it's not a very strong color. And so when I added too many colors and then what I was doing is I was doing a ship's wheel with a background. And the ship's wheel in the background kind of blended so that you couldn't really tell where one stopped and one started. And I was very disappointed in my work. And so I said, oh, the heck with it, I'll go to work now. And I did. And when I got home, it had bled some more because it keeps going while it's still wet. And it had bled some more and it had dried some more and it looked fabulous. The only difference was, of course, as I said, they were the subject and the background had kind of touched up against each other in such a way that it was very hard to tell where one stopped and one started. So I took uh, my fancy dancy little black marker pen here and I basically just outlined the very edge of the ship's wheel to give it some definition and then I loved it. But when it was wet like this I really didn't like the way it had it turned out. I was not satisfied at all with the work that I'd done and I was really unhappy with myself. And so it was a really nice surprise when I got home later and it looked fabulous. So this is something I've, I'm learning is that you have to let it do its own thing and sometimes it surprises you. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't turn out the way you expect because obviously it is something that has a mind of its own, really. But if you let it do its own thing, it comes out much more naturally than you would expect because it has this ability to just spread and bleed on its own. You don't have to worry about hard edges and things again unless you've got a stop or a build up. So anyways, I have to let this dry before I can put the black on. So I'm going to end the video here and wander around and do something else. Maybe I'll even get dressed, who knows. But I will come back for a second video once it's dry and we can add the trees. So until then, toodles!